Hey, welcome to Vortex Garage. If you've ever had a vehicle with cloudy headlights, have you ever wondered, is it better to restore those headlights or is it better to replace them with a cheap set of aftermarket headlights? So to find out, today we're gonna to do a three-way test. We're going to test a clouded headlight, that is an OEM headlight, then we're gonna do a restoration using the Sylvania Headlight Restoration Kit, and we're gonna take another test to see how much it improved. And finally, we'll swap the headlamp assembly out with this aftermarket unit and take a look at the test results from that. Now, as for the tests themselves, well, one of them will be a little bit scientific, the other will be relatively subjective, but we'll try to keep some consistency in both. So for the first test, what we have is this cheap Lux meter here and we have it about one meter away from our headlamp and we have it angled and positioned right at the correct height of the headlamp. We're gonna be testing the lux output of each of the three and we're gonna test it two ways. First, we're gonna test it with the low beams and then with the high beams. Now off camera, I've gone ahead and put this directly in the center uh, so we'll hopefully get a good consistent measurement across both low beam and high beam. Obviously, if I were to move this into the focal point of each one of those bulbs, I'd actually get a higher lux reading on each one. But what I'm trying to do here is an average across both low beam and high beam. The idea being, I, on this test, I'm strictly looking for a change in light output from your clouded headlight, your restored OEM, to your brand new aftermarket. And of course, while all our our lux meter is one meter away from this light. We aren't going to move the tripod or adjust the lux meter. So this will stay in a static position. Our Jeep will not move. It will stay in a static position. So this light output test should be nice and standard. The second test that we're gonna do, which is a little bit more subjective, but we will try to keep standard, is we are going to take the vehicle out after each test in the dark, and we're gonna get some pictures of the light distribution. Now to make that a little more consistent, I'm gonna lock the camera settings. So that means the shutter, the aperture, the exposure, all of that will be consistent using manual settings across each photo. We'll also be doing it about the same time at night and uh, it will be across two nights, but each night is both the same level of cloud cover. Fortunately, we've had consistent weather. So those images that will show on the screen will be undoctored and they will match the camera settings rather than allowing the camera to automatically adjust the lighting while it might not necessarily match what I see with my eyes, we'll try to dial it in as close as we can. The point again being, we wanna be able to show you the difference of the general light output you'll see on the road, but also one of the more important things with OEM versus aftermarket is the spread pattern of the light. So we'll have this pointing down the road in the same spot and you can hopefully see the difference. One more programming note, in order to assure we have a steady light output, we won't be running the vehicle, but I do have the vehicle set up on a CTEC charger. So we're gonna have a consistent amount of battery power and current in the battery when we do the light test. So again, we don't wanna you know, run the lights for 20 minutes, clean a bunch of stuff and then run it, finding out we drain the battery and we're getting less output. So we should have consistent light output. Also, as I swap the housings, I'm gonna swap the existing bulbs that are in here. So the same bulbs will be in all tests. Uh, even though they're older, we'll probably eventually replace them and that whatever we settle with, and unfortunately I didn't plan ahead, it would be kind of cool to see what a new set of bulbs would do to help out as well. Um, but again, to keep consistently, consistency, we're gonna keep the original bulbs and use them in all the tests. The final comment, and I'm gonna have this camera to kind of show you, is that on our original headlamps, it does appear that one of them is less cloudy than the other. Now I don't see any stickers on this to indicate that it's an aftermarket piece. We'll know for sure when we take it off. So I don't know with the history of this vehicle if it had any bumps or bruises that required a headlight replacement and if it's an OEM piece, but we do know that this is definitely an original one. So to keep things static again in all our tests, we'll be testing the left-hand side or in the US, the driver's side headlamp only when it comes to our lux meters. Now on our light spread tests, of course, this one does look a little cleaner and that will come into play in those tests as well. You know, perhaps it would have been a little worse from the onset if this one was equally as cloudy, but it is still pretty cloudy itself. It's definitely not clear. 
All right, so what we're gonna do right now, we're gonna go ahead and we've already taken this out last night and gotten our images with our clouded stock headlights. So we're gonna do our Lux measurements and then we can start restoring these and do those a second time. And then we can move on to our aftermarket lights. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna go ahead and power on our Lux meter here and a couple things you might find interesting. It does have a range button, which is out of the camera frame. But as I change that, you'll see it'll adjust. It doesn't have a good, you know, it kind of moves the decimal point. It doesn't tell you the first one. You just see the decimal point disappear. But what we're going to do is we're going to go to a times 10 range. So this is, uh, as you see, 140 if you add 10 to that. We go back to standard we're looking at about 140 right on the dot but you do lose a little of that low resolution of the lux you know your decimal points and and even into your tens when you go here at your times 10. so we're going to lose you know the tens of lux uh, when we do that but that's important because when we test the lights we're going to easily blow by the scale and well if you do that let me go back to that and show you if we just have it even on this scale right here I believe we're going to go straight to one when we do this. But if we were to change here, well, even this light's going to blow by it. But you can see here, we can very easily go to a higher scale. So our times 10 is where we're going to need to be. I've already tested this with the lights. We're going to do two tests. We'll do one with the shop lights on. We'll do one with the shop lights off. Just After some preliminary testing, I elected to hook up a larger battery charger to run during any light on tests. This would ensure we were keeping the battery at a steady state and then we don't have any voltage loss during our tests that may invalidate the results. During each test, I did find as the lights powered on and the lux meter began to detect light, it would take a few seconds for the reading to fully stabilize. In each test, we took this into account, ensuring we have the readings as accurate as possible. With the cloudy OEM headlights, the low beams with the shop lights on settled at about 650 lux. Switching on the high beams, the meter took a bit longer to settle, but eventually reached a reading of 4,570 lux. Now I'm going to turn us back to low beams. Let's shut the shop lights off and we'll uh, test without the shop lights. While probably not needed as we're solely looking for percentage of change, we did do each test with the shop lights off as well. As various things in the shop could be adding reflective light, we did want to share both readings, shop lights on and shop lights off. With the shop lights off, the cloudy lights saw 480 lux on the low beams. On high beams, they settled at 4,400 lux. All right, so for our next step, I'm gonna go ahead and restore the headlights using the Sylvania kit. If you're a fan of Project Farm, you'll know that this was kind of one of the winners in their headlight restoration uh, test for 20 bucks for one of these sets. They do a really good job. Now, my experience is that the final covering that you put on, there's like a, 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 a protective covering. It looks and smells very similar to like polyurethane that you would put on wood. And what I've noticed, I did my Lincoln about a year and a half ago, and it does yellow a tiny bit. So it comes out darn near perfect, but after sitting through an entire summer and, and, and outdoors, you might notice a little bit of yellowing, but not offensive, nothing like this. Those headlights still look really good. I'll try to grab a picture of them knowing again, you got about a year and a half of wear on this kit on that. So again, as mentioned, here's what it looks like after about a year and a half. It is a little, little tiny bit dirty but all in all held up pretty well the uh, coating is still pretty smooth there's a tiny bit of cloudiness on it a little bit of yellowing to the coating but very minimal i would still rank these as 85 percent clear if not closer to 90 percent clear so it's actually pretty impressive. For 20 bucks, you can walk away with a good setup. I know there are more professional types of kits, more professional setups, but again, if this is you in your garage and you're curious what's the best way to go, you'd probably pick up one of these kits and that's what we're gonna use. 
I'm not going to show you how to use it because, well, that's super boring. I'm sure you can read instructions just like we can. We're just going to go ahead and knock both of these out and we'll come back when we're done. Like I've said, that Sylvania kit does a really good job with that final UV coating. It really does leave these lights crystal clear. And uh, for 20 bucks, it certainly makes you wonder why you'd want to spend any more on an aftermarket replacement that honestly is only a touch, if that, much shinier and brighter. Or clearer, I should say. Certainly if you look off to the side, you can see a little more of the clarity loss here, but you know, dead on, these things look darn near perfect. I'd say you get you know, probably 95% clarity out of these, if not a little higher, compared to a brand new set. It really does a good job. All right, so we've given it about an hour for this to dry. It's not fully cured yet, but we should be able to go ahead and do our Lux readings on our nice uh, restored headlamps. And you know, the more I do this, the more I look at these and go, these restored headlamps look so darn good. <laughs> it almost does not make logical sense to replace them. But we're doing this a little more scientifically than that just subjective nature and that anecdotal conversation about how the job has gone. We're going to get some specific data here and try to prove our assumption that you should probably just restore your headlights rather than replace them. So let's go ahead and pull the readings. Okay, there is our low beams. With our OEM housings restored, we saw 750 lux from the low beams with the shop lights on. The high beams saw a much larger increase, all the way to 15,090 lux, an increase of over 10,000 lux. Remember though that our lux meter is aimed at the center of the headlamp housing, thus probably granting the high beams, which have a little bit more of a direct beam, a better reading. Still, this is a major bump from the cloudy lens. And of course, we didn't move either the meter or the Jeep between tests. Yeah, just look at how nice and crystal clear those brights are. Super nice, super, super nice. With the shop lights off, it was a similar story. The low beam settled at 570 lux, and the high beams again saw a massive jump, settling in at 14,670 lux. All right, I think our headlights are pretty dry and close to cured. I think we'll be safe pulling them out. So on the WJ to do that, it's actually pretty simple. You've just got a seven millimeter long bolt on each one, and then they pop out with little plastic clips. But I find it's nice to get the grill out of the way because that allows you to get a better grip on this side of the light. There's plenty of videos and guides for removing WJ headlights. Heck, we even have one in our WJ radiator removal video. So let's speed this part up and get back to the light testing. But I did want to show clips just to confirm we did swap the housings and we did put the same low and high beam bulbs in each. All right, we've got our two bulbs in from our old housing or from our original housing, same bulbs, nothing new or fancy. Hmm. They seem okay. Well, <laughs> I say that, but 
you know, just again to kind of show you like some of the things you're going to see here. Like, look at this, this goo, this sealant goo on the side. Um, they have these little metal clasps. The plastic is relatively thin, but um, it does have the vent. It, it does a pretty good job mimicking the other part, that's for sure. And this one is the chrome one for the limited. And you can get both designs. All right, so let's go ahead and put these light, lights in. All right, well, this is an odd, oddity. This does not want to go in. All right, so here is the issue that I'm seeing. This doesn't fit into that hole to even get to where the three prongs are. If you see that, you see the three prongs are about a quarter inch up there, but this will not even go in. There it goes. A little tight fit there. All right, now they're in and now they're cinched, I think. All right, so I think we got it. So this uh, push a little hard, definitely not OEM quality. But they're also not OEM price. Stop fooling yourself. Cool. And then uh, should just be a matter of lining these up to those plastic holes and pushing it home. Then drop in your bolt, get it started. Done. And it's in there. Pop this in. Now, are we adjusting it? Nope. Putting it in just like it came. Putting it in just like it came because, well, that's what everyone's going to do. But we're going to check and see how out of whack they really are when we have it fired up. We're ready to go ahead and test. So here we are, low beams with, oh, they are way lower. I can tell you right off the bat, these, this is lower on this side for sure. Let me just make sure it's fully seated. Yeah, that's seated all right. It certainly looks to be a little lower perhaps, but let's take a look at our Lux meter here. With the aftermarket housings installed but not adjusted, we only saw 380 Lux on our low beam test with the shop lights on. Going the high beams, we saw 8,490. Now, misadjustment was making this a much lower reading than our OEM restored lights. And things were consistent with the shop lights off. A mere 220 lux was read for low beams and 8,220 with the high beams. Obviously, the adjustment was really pulling both beams further away from the meter's sensor. So I think we went back and we finally matched up our alignment of this light about matching the original one. It took a little bit of work to get it there, um, but it's definitely a good reminder. And we did this in the Civic video when we put new headlights in it. Leave your vehicle somewhere where you can mark. And you've even seen our old marks from other cars here on the door. Mark your door, put a little pattern with the low and high beam with masking tape, replace them, and you can dial them in right where the others were. Doesn't mean they'll be perfect, but it'll get you nice and close. Once we took the time to adjust the beams, the aftermarket housings were still reading low. Now we did our best to match them to where the old beam sat on the shop door, but perhaps they're still not perfect. Either way, our low beam reading was still low at only 540 lux. The high beams were a major improvement, but still lower than expected at 13,100 lux. With the shop lights off, these readings were taken again and the low beams hit only 400 lux and the high beams settled in at 12,970 lux. All right, now that we've done our empirical checks here, let's go ahead and show you some images that show the three uh, different headlight variations on the road. Now remember, these images were taken with the exact same camera settings and they were taken about the same time at night, one day apart, so the light level on the road should be about identical. Now, we'll show a series of images from the driver's seat as well as just outside the vehicle. First up is low beams. 
Now the first image is with the cloudy lens, and the second we see the restored OEM. Now that shows a much better beam pattern with better far and wide focus. The final image shows the aftermarket adjusted headlamp, and it is comparable, but the OEM seems to have a better pattern and more defined high cutoff. Next up is the high beams. The big thing we see here is just how much the cloudy light diffuses the beam pattern, as well as how it reduces overall light output. The restored OEM shows a much more defined light pattern that shoots much further, higher, and wider. The aftermarkets do a good job here too, with overall light pattern very close to OEM, but subjectively, I felt the OEMs threw a bit more light. Now one more testing note. Our lux meter test is extremely simple and it misses many key variables. And this is really evident if you ever review the IIHS light testing steps, which we'll link to in the description. It's a multi-page PDF you can view that shows a very intricate testing process that takes into account the variables you actually deal with while driving. Now our single position lux meter test is really just one simple variable that is easily thrown off by light angle changes but we hope that it is still data that can show rough changes between the options. So let's talk about the data really quick as we see the graphs. We'll show each in a graph, both for the shop lights on and the shop lights off tests. First, we see a graphical representation of the Lux data we recorded between the cloudy headlight, the restored headlight, and the aftermarket headlight, both before and after we adjusted the aftermarket headlights beam. As we get into the next set of graphs, we're going to explore the percentage difference in the restored OEM and the aftermarket headlight assemblies. Now what's really interesting here and how the data can lie is that we see the aftermarket assembly appears to output less lux than the cloudy light. We see this also when we go to the high beams. Now these show definitely a major improvement, but it's still less than the OEM restored units due to their adjustment. Well, this is just a factor of the lux meter's light detector and the fact that we did not move it during the test. The aftermarket housings definitely do output more light. I can tell you that from being in the shop. But the focal point of the beam is what changed with the aftermarket housing. Thus, the meter, which didn't move, picked up less light from the low beam. Also, even when we quote unquote adjusted it, we still showed less lux. Well, the question remains, did we adjust it fully correct? And this is where looking at the light spread images is really key. You know, here the data is great, but it can also be a bit misleading because while we didn't change the light meter or the Jeep's position, it's definitely clear that the lights themselves move in the new housing. It's a factor of their adjustment. So hopefully this data was still helpful, even though it is slightly confusing when you look at the graphs, but I think again, it's just an indicator of the adjustment factor with the aftermarkets. Now, after doing all this, what would I do? What would I recommend in hindsight? And I'll tell you what I would do. I would not get aftermarket housings. I would go ahead and I would restore, assuming my OEM headlights were not cracked or leaking or otherwise damaged, I would get the Sylvania kit for 20 bucks and I would spend the half hour, follow the instructions, and I would go ahead and clean them up. They will get to 95% of new, they will look great, and when it comes to the night and day difference of what you had versus what you end up with, you're going to be thrilled with it. And as we showed you on my Lincoln, which has had them done about a year and a half ago, it does seem to hold up pretty good. That car is outside all the time in all of the elements. It gets driven a lot and the headlight restoration is held up. Now, the aftermarket assemblies, they're going to vary in cost. Sometimes you can find them super cheap, like 75 bucks for a pair. But most likely you're looking at somewhere between 130 to maybe $300 for a pair. Now, if you consider the fact that these cheap aftermarket units are going to require some work to align and sometimes not match up, they have a lot of things going against them. First off, the labor to swap these out on the WJ and put them back in, swap the bulbs over, was more than it was for me to just restore the existing headlights. On other vehicles, it can be even worse. Like our Civic that we did a couple years ago, we had to take the bumper cover off. So some cars, it's quite a pain to change out the headlight assemblies. The WJ is actually pretty easy. 
Next, you do risk breaking stuff as you take it apart in an older vehicle. You never know what could happen, so there's always a little more risk involved. Next up, as we said, we, we did all the labor to swap them out. We put them in, and the light output was horrendous because they were so badly misaligned. This one was pointing straight into the dirt, and this one was looking up at the sky. So if we took this thing on the road without, without adjusting them, we would have blinded people with this one and not seen anything out of this side because it's pointing up. And we would have blinded some squirrels with this one and not seen anything because we were shooting right into the ground. Either way, it's just a lot more of a pain to swap to these housings. And you could just restore them for 30 minutes and 20 bucks. And if you wanted to do it once a year, you could go several years before you would meet the cost of getting these housings, not to mention the hassle. And the final nail in the coffin of these aftermarket housings is that yes, these look spectacular today but I'll tell you when they won't look spectacular, and that is a year from now. I'll bet you a year from now, these housings will look worse than the restored with the Sylvania kit. I just have seen some of these aftermarket housings. This plastic looks great when you take it out of the box, but it just doesn't hold up to the UV. So you're gonna want, if you do these, at minimum, you gotta get some sort of a UV coating and keep up with it to try to protect this plastic, because this is gonna yellow a lot sooner than the OEM ones did. So. That's it. If it were me, I'd be restoring my headlights. I wouldn't bother with the aftermarket replacements. Now I guess I'm going to have to pull these things out and put the restored ones back in because I think I like those better. All right, so hopefully you found this interesting. Whether or not you have a Grand Cherokee or some other car, now you kind of get a little better understanding of your options when it comes to restoring or returning your headlights to their former glory. Uh, what we didn't do in this video, but we could perhaps do in a future video, is take these existing bulbs and we'll try some aftermarket kind of halogen upgrades and also everyone sees all the LED upgrades around. Maybe we'll get a cheap LED and a nice LED set and kind of do the same thing with our Lux meter, but also our road test. So in the meantime, if you liked what you saw here, do us a favor, subscribe for more, drop us a like, leave a comment on your experiences. We'd love to hear that. And otherwise, please join us back here for more on Vortex Garage.